Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Book Read. My my episode. Um, I'm Bradley from Bradley and Esther's show. Hello, Esther. Hello. You're in this episode. I know, but you were talking to me. And um, today, we, well, in this episode, we read some of our favourite books. Today, I'm reading Roll Doll. Revolting Rhyme. Revolting Rhyme. So, uh, today we'll be reading, today we'll be reading The Three Little Pigs, no, yeah, Three Little Pigs in Goldilocks and the Three Bears. No, we'll be reading Little Red Riding Hood and Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So, yeah, and I'm much better at reading than Esther, so I should be, uh, uh, uh. so, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. When little Snow White's mother died, the king, her father, up and cried, oh, what a nuisance, what a lie, now I must find another wife. It's never easy for a king to fight to find himself that sort of thing. He wrote to every magazine and said, I'm looking for a queen. At least 10,000 girls replied and begged to be the royal bride. The king said with a shifty smile, I'd like to give each one a trial. However, in the end, he chose a lady called Miss MacLeod. Who brought along a curious toy that seemed to give her endless joy? This was a mirror framed in brass, a magic talking looking glass. And there's a little picture just there at the bottom. Ask it something to day or night. It always got the answer right. For instance, if you were to say, Oh, mirror, what's for lunch today? The thing would answer in a trice. Today it's scrambled egg on rice. Now oh, every day, right. week in week, week in week out, the spoiled and stupid queen should shout. Oh, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The mirror answered every time. Oh, madame, you're the queen, sublime. You are the only one to charm us. Queen you are the cat's pajamas. For ten full years, the silly queen repeated this absurd routine. Then suddenly, one awful day, she heard the magic mirror say, From now on, queen, you're number two. Snow White is prettier than you. The queen went absolutely wild. She yelled, I'm going to scrag that child. I'll cook her flaming goose. I'll skin her, I'll have her rotting guts for dinner. She called the huntsman to her study. She shouted at him, Listen, buddy, you drag that filthy girl outside and see you take her for a ride. They're after to slit her ribs apart and bring me back her bleeding heart. The huntsman dragged a lovely child. Deep, deep into the forest wild. Feeling the words, poor Snow White spake. She cried, oh please give me a break. The knife was poised, the arm was strong. She cried again, I've done no wrong. The huntsman's heart began to flutter. It melted like a pound of butter. He murmured, OK, beat it, kid. And, and you can bet your life she did. Later, the huntsman made a stop. Was in the local butcher shop. And there he bought a safety stake. A bullock's heart and one nice steak. Oh, majesty, old queen, he cried. That rotten little girl has died. And just to prove I didn't cheat, I brought along this bit of meat. The queen cried out, Bravissimo, I trust you killed her nice and slow. Then this is the, 
then is the disgusting part. The queen sat down and ate the heart. I only hope she cooked it, cooked it well. Boiled, boiled heart can be as tough as tough as tough as rubber. Rubber, it says rubber. It says rubber. <laughs> While all of this was going on, all we all we're away had to say white gone. With his picture there as well. Can you see that? You see it? It's a long poem, oh my gosh. She's found it easy beginning footage to hitch a ride into the city and then she got a job unpaid as a general cook, parliament, with seven funny little men, each one not more than three foot ten. Ex horse race jockeys, all of them, these seven dwarves. Though awfully nice, was guilty of one shocking vice. They squandered all over their resources at the racetrack backing horse. When they hadn't backed a winner, none of them got any dinner. One evening, Snow White said, Look here, I think I got an idea. Just leave it all to me, okay? And no more gambling till I say. That very nice of Evan Tide. Blue Snow White hitched another ride, and then when it was very late, she slipped in through the palace gate. The king was in his counting house, counting his money. The queen was in the parlour, eating bread and honey. The footman servant slept, so no one saw her as she crept on tiptoe through the mighty hall and grabbed the mirror off the wall. As soon as she had got it home, she told the skinny dwarf, or gnome, to ask it what he wished to know. Go on, she shouted, have a go. She said, oh mirror, please don't break. Each one of us is stony break. Which horse will win tomorrow in race? The Ascot Gold Cup steel chase. The mirror whispered sweet and low, the horse name is Mistletoe. Yep. The dwarves went absolutely daft. They kissed young Snow White for an ass, then rushed away to raise some dough with which tobacco mistletoe. They pawned their watches, sold their car, they borrowed money near and far. Much of it they had to thank the manager of the Barclays Bank. They went to Ascot, of course, to one they backed the winning horse. They are at it every single day. The mirror made the bookies pay. Each dwarf and Snow White got a share, and each was soon a millionaire, which shows that gambling is not the sin. It's bad that you always win. Yeah. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. We have had an early morning stroll. Oh, never mind. That's the next right. So, next one. Nice ride. I like that. Little Red Riding Hood. As soon as wolves begin to feel that he would like a decent meal, he went and knocked on Grandma's door. When Grandma opened it, she saw the sharp white teeth, the horrid grin, and Wolfie said, May I come in? Poor Grandma was terrified. He's going to eat me up, she cried. And she was absolutely right. He ate her up in one big bite. But Grandma was small and tough. And Wolfie wailed, that's not enough. I have yet begun to feel that I have had a decent meal. He ran out the kitchen, yelping, I've got to have a second helping. Then added with a frightful leer. I'm therefore going to wait right here till Little Miss Riding Hood comes home from walking in the woods. He quickly put on Grandma's clothes. Of course he had eaten those. Hadn't eaten those. He dressed himself in the coat he had 
He put on the sheep after that, he even brushed and killed his sheep, then sat himself in grandma's chair. In came the little girl in red. She stopped, she stared, and then she said, What great, what great big ears you have, grandma! Oh, the better to see you with, the wolf replied. What great big eyes you have, grandma! said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to see you with, the wolfy replied. She sat there, watching, watching and smiled. She thought, I'm going to eat this child. Compared with her old grandma, she's going to taste like caviar. The Little Red Riding Hood said, But grandma, what a lovely pretty curly coat you have on. That's wrong, cried the wolf. Have you got to tell me what big teeth I've got? Ah well, no matter. What you say, I'm going to eat you anyway. The little girl smiles, one eyelid flitters. She whips a pistol from her oh, knickers. Yeah. She aims it at the creature's head and bang, bang, bang to shoot him dead. I like this one. I heard it on the ball. Mm. A few weeks, weeks later in the wood, I came across Miss Riding Hood, but what a change, no cloak of red, no silly hood upon her head. She said, hello, and do please note my lovely furry wolf skin coat. So, the three little pigs. Final one. The animal I really dig above all of them is the pig. Pigs are noble, pigs are clever, pigs are courageous. However, now and then to break this rule, one meets a pig who is a fool. What, for example, would you say if strolling through the woods one day, right there in front of you, you saw a pig who built his house out of straw? The wolf who saw it licked his lips and said, That pig has had his chips. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The little pig began to pray, but Wolfie blew his house away. He shouted, bacon, pork and ham. Oh, what a lucky wolf I am. And though he ate the pig quite fast, he carefully kept the tail till last. Wolfie wondered on a trifle, bloated to cry, the prize was soon he noted. Another little house for a pig, and this one had been built with twigs. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, by the hairs of my chin, chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The wolf, the wolf said, OK, here we go. He then began to blow and blow. The little pig began to squeal. He cried, Oh, wolf, you've had one meal. Why can't we talk and make a deal? The wolf replied, Not on your nelly. Soon the pig was in his belly. Two juicy little pigs, wolf cried, but still I'm not satisfied. I know full well my tummy's bulging, but oh how I adore indulging. So cruising quietly with their mouth, the wolf approached another house, a house which was also had inside a little piggy trying to hide. But this piggy, number three, was bright and rainy as could be. No straw for him, no twig or stick. The pig had built his house out of brick. You, you will not get, you will not get me. The piggy cried. I'll blow your house down. The wolf replied. You need, you need. Pig said. A lot of puff, and I don't think you've got enough. The wolf puffed and puffed and blew and blew. The house stayed up. As good as new. If I can't blow it down, Wolf said, I'll have to blow it up instead. 
they'll come back in the dead of night and blow it up with dynamite. He cried, You brute, I might have known. Then picking up the telephone, he dialed as quickly as could be the number of Red Riding Hood. Hello, hello, she said. Who's speaking? Who? Oh, hello, Piggy. How do you do? He cried, I need your help, Miss Hood. I'll help you, please. Do you think you could? Do you think you could? I'll try and call you, Miss Hood replied. What's on your mind? A wolf, he cried. I know you dealt with wolves before, and now I've got one at my door. My darling piggy said, my sweet. That's something really up my street. I've just begun to wash my hair, but when it's dry, I'll be right there. A short while later, through the wood, came striding brave Miss Riding Hood. The wolf stood there, his eyes ablaze, a yellowish light mayonnaise. His teeth were sharp, his gums were raw, a spit was dripping from his jaw. Once more the maiden's eyelids flitted, she drew the pistol from her knitted. Once more she hit the vital spot and kills him with one single shot. Pig peeping through the window stood and yelled, Well done, Miss Piggy, Miss Riding Hood. Ah, Piglet, you must never trust young lady from the upper crust. For now, Miss Riding Hood wants moot. Not only has two wolfskin coats, but she goes from place to place. She has pigskin travelling case. Anyway, anyway, so that's the thing. If you want to me to read more of it, comment down below. But that's all. That's all I've got time for today. So, bye bye. It will be back next week with different books. So, bye bye. Two doors. Bye bye.